Once again, it's time to look at few hex components. Today we will be looking at four of them. We'll start in a couple of seconds. If you are using ZigBee2MQTT and are obsessed with the map from ZigBee2MQTT of all of your devices, well, this one will be for you. We will be looking at how you can import the ZigBee2MQTT map inside the Home Assistant without the need to go to the add-on itself. Mind you, the installation for this component is a bit different than all the others. It is done through the hex, but we still have to manually specify the resources. So let's start with the installation. In Home Assistant, we'll go to Hex, Frontend, Explore and Download Repositories, and type in Zigbee, and click on Zigbee to MQTT Network Map Card. Click on Download, at the time of the recording version 0.8.0 was the latest version, and once again download. It should finish in a couple of seconds. And of course, the last step is to hit Reload. But unlike the other components, we still have to do one step manually. Let's go to the documentation here and copy this URL or path to a JavaScript file. And we will have to go to Dashboard, Resources, Add Resource and add this part in the URL as a JavaScript module and click Create. Overview, three dots, Edit Dashboard, three dots, Manage Resources, Add Resource, Paste the URL, leave it at JavaScript module and click Create. Of course, now you have to reload the UI for this JavaScript to be loaded. And that's it. There are still a couple of other steps we need to do. We need to connect our Zigbee to MQTT with Home Assistant, and that is done through the MQTT integration. I'll go to Visual Studio Code, and I already have MQTT file where my binary sensor and the normal sensors are located. If you do not have that, inside your configuration YAML file, you can just add MQTT sensor and paste the code here. Let me format it. The code is available in documentation. You just copy it from the documentation and paste it inside your MQTT sensors part of the configuration YAML file. Of course, since this is a YAML configuration, we will have to restart our Home Assistant for this configuration to be loaded inside Home Assistant. Let me go to Developer Tools, check Configuration, and of course, restart it. And now, wherever you want in your dashboard, click on three dots, Edit Dashboard, Add Card, I will select Manual, and we'll replace it with the custom zigbee 2 mqtt network map, and the entity sensor will be sensorzigbee 2 mqtt underscore network map. This code can also be copied from the documentation of this component, and click on Save. Since this is the empty map, we can now press refresh and it will take some time for the map to show up or appear inside our dashboard. And after a couple of minutes, depending on the size of your network, you should see, well, something like this. A whole mess. <laughs> That's unfortunately the web of my 80 Zigbee devices. And don't forget to say thanks to the author by going to the repository and clicking on a star. That's one of the ways, but also the easiest way to say thanks to them. If on your dashboard you do not have that many icons or text, this is something that you may appreciate on your dashboard. Unfortunately, all of my dashboards have too many icons, so this component will not look pretty on my setup, but let's give it a try. What it does, it allows you to show both the icon and the name of that icon, because how dashboards work. If you have text, it will show you the text, but as soon as you select the icon, the icon will override and it will hide the text. I mostly use icons because I have just too much of the tabs inside the dashboard, but if you do not have that many tabs, you may prefer a view like this. Let's go check it out. Let's go to Hex, Frontend, Explore and Download Repositories, type in Keep, and select Keep Texts in Tabs. Click on Download. At the time of the recording, the latest version is version 1.1.5 and click Download. Since this is a front-end component, we will not need to restart the Home Assistant, we will just need to reload it. Reload, and that's it. In order to activate this, we need to click on three dots, Edit Dashboard, also three dots, and then Raw Configuration Editor. This will load our default dashboard, and what we need to do is we need to add following lines. 
keep texts in tabs and enable true. Click save, close it. And as you can see, now we have those that are without icons, but all the others that also have icons have text right beside the icon itself. For some of you, this may help with the navigation, but as I said, I just have too many tabs and it's easier for me to have only the icons visible on the dashboard itself. If you do end up using and if you do like this component, don't forget to give the author a like by starting the repository. It will mean a lot to them. And also, it will mean a lot to me. There are a couple of ways to get averages inside Home Assistant, but one of the ways you can do it is by using this average sensor for Home Assistant. It's very easy to add, configure, it's customizable, so you may enjoy or prefer using that over some other functionality that is either built in or done through some other components. In Home Assistant, go to Hacks, Integrations, click on Explore and Download Repositories, and type in Average, and select Average Sensor. Since this is not a front-end component and this is an integration or custom component, we will have to restart our Home Assistant after we finish doing also part of the manual configuration. Click on Download. The latest version at time of the recording is version 2.3.1. Click on Download. And now we will have to restart our Home Assistant. But before we do that, we also need to create sensors or specify what sensors we will be using to create average values. For the next step, we need to specify the YAML code. You can do it either through the configuration YAML file, if you are using just configuration YAML file. If you have sensors in the sensors YAML file, you do that there. But I have split configuration where each of the sensors is in the separate file. So in the sensors folder, I will create a new file called weatheraverage.yaml. This is the format that you should be using inside your configuration YAML file or sensors YAML file. For me, it's a bit different. I have to format it for my configuration. Platform is average, name, you have to give your own name. In my case, this will be weather, average, temperature. And here you can specify either one or multiple sensors. But the biggest difference of this average sensor and the built-in sensors in Home Assistant is that it can accept values not just from sensors. In this case, I'm pulling weather information from three integrations. One is AccuWeather, the other one is home, this is mat.no, if I'm not mistaken. And the third one is my custom weather integration that I've created with a combination of using public sources, but also sensors around my flat. Plus, for the average values, I'm also using two outdoor sensors, one on each side of the apartment. After restart, if we go to states and check the sensor weather average temperature, we will get the state, and this is the average state between those five sensors. Three are weather integrations and two are outside sensors. As you can see, currently only two sensors or two sources are available because the system has just restarted and it didn't have time to pull the weather information. So we have two available sources, which are probably those two sensors here. We have maximum value, minimum value, and average state of minus 3.55 degrees centigrade. You can, of course, use this data now in your dashboards. But this is not all that you can do with the average sensor for Home Assistant. If you go to the documentation, you can see that you can also specify the average values across a period, period of one days. But there are also additional things that you can do. For example, if you specify unique ID, and I do recommend that you use unique ID because it will help you to customize the sensor inside or from within Home Assistant. These are all the things that you can do. And here is what you can specify for the durations and other examples. So go check out this hex integration. And don't forget that if you do like this integration, you have option of either supporting the author on the Patreon or at least go to his GitHub repository and click on star to say thanks for this awesome hex integration. And the last hex integration for today is called Measure It. And this was a tip from one of the viewers. Thank you. So what you can do with the Measure It? You can measure daily shower duration number of times planes during the night flew over the head. For that, for example, the author is proposing to use Flight Radar 24, or you can use the Open Sky integration. Measure the time your kids are watching the TV. Measure how many times the door were open when the AC was on. So there are a lot of things that you can measure, either directly, for example, tracking the state of the kitchen lights to see if the kitchen lights are on and off, and then tracking the time when they were in the state on or you can combine and use templates and do something as it said here, track how many times the door were open or how long was the door open while the AC was still running. Okay, let's jump back to Home Assistant, go to Integrations, Explore and Download, tap in Measure, 
and click on Measure it. Click on Download. At the time of the recording, the version 0.1.0 .0 was the latest version. Click on Download. And we will have to restart our Home Assistant since this is not a front-end, but the integration itself. Let's go to Developer Tools, Restart, Restart Home Assistant. On the Integrations page, in Home Assistant, click on Add Integration, type Measure, select it, and we will begin with the configuration of whatever we want to measure in Home Assistant. The setup is done through the wizard. You can select either time or source sensor. Time sensor measures a duration while a condition or template equals true. Source will measure the value changes of another entity while a condition is true. So here, for example, you may measure if the heating is on and there is nobody at home. And in the source, you may measure how much power was used while nobody is at home. Let's select time. We will give it a name. Kitchen lights are on. And here I've created a template is state light kitchen on. If it's in a true state, the counter will count. I will select all the days from 00 to 00, meaning all of the time. Click next. Here you can specify how long will it record the intervals. This is something like utility meters for the utility, for the gas, electricity, etc. I will specify day, month, and year. Unit of measurement here will be seconds and it will be device class duration with the total increasing. Click on next and this should be it. If we now search for kitchen, lights are on, day, month, year, we see that the state is currently zero. I've now turned on the kitchen lights and you can see that the numbers have starting to rise. They're currently 4.7 seconds. If I stop the light, it will update the value. The new value is 25 seconds. And in the attributes, you will see the states. States waiting for a condition. That means that the condition is not met, which means that the lights are currently off. Or if I turn the lights on, status will be measuring. That means that it matches the condition I've specified and it's currently measuring the state. We can also see when will be the next reset. For the day sensor, it will be tonight at midnight or tomorrow at midnight, 1st of February and the 1st of January 2025. And that's it. As you can see, this is a very handy sensor. I myself previously, some five years ago, created a, such a long templates to be able to do this same thing. That was tracking the state and then created a counter that would count day, month, and year total usage or total power on for each of the rooms or how many seconds or minutes per year were the lights on in each of the rooms. But the most powerful thing is that you can use condition and templates here that will allow you to customize this even further. And this is it for this awesome Hex integrations video. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that you may end up using at least one of those integrations. And if you do end up using any of those integrations, don't forget to give author a star on the GitHub repository so that they know that they have done an awesome job and that people like their Hex integrations. But also, if you did like this video, don't forget to give me or this video a like, check that you are already subscribed so that YouTube knows that this is a good video and more people should see it. And by liking and subscribing to this channel, you will help me fulfill one of my to-do lists for this year. And this is to rule the world. And before I wrap up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, shared, subscribed or commented on my videos. I really do appreciate it. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. One more thing that you can do is also you can give me a super thanks, and I will as always be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.